hey, this lesson, we're gonna be outputting the file contents. And that means that we need to create a file. We've just got the regular GS file, so that's the starting file. So under File, New, select HTML file. And this is gonna be our basic index file that we're gonna to use to output our HTML content. And so let's just update this so it's got some custom code. And let's uh, say hello world within an H1 tag. And then this is just regular client side code. So whatever you would type as regular client side code, you could output into here. So just call it index as we're gonna be creating multiple pages within the upcoming lessons. So we've once we've created the index HTML file and you can also copy and paste whatever HTML content that you want within this file. And let's go back into the function, the do get. And instead of returning content service, we're gonna use HTML service and create, and we've got a number of options here. So we can create HTML output with HTML code. So if we want to do hello, we can just type in all of the code. And of course, this is gonna be a very difficult way to write a lot of HTML code. So if we refresh it, we're gonna get the output of hello, uh, but it's not the best way to output a lot of HTML code, especially if you've got some more front end code and styling and JavaScript. So you wanna just regularly output whatever is within the index.html file. So we wanna render out all of this HTML code. So the way to do that is to use the HTML service, but instead of creating output from the HTML string value, we're gonna use a template and a template from file. So this is gonna use the whatever the file name that we're indicating here. And you need to add in the quotes around this in order for it to be able to identify which file. And it's automatically gonna add the HTML extension so you don't have to include that. So now what it's gonna do is, instead of just returning back whatever that HTML content was, it's gonna create that HTML content from the template file, which is the one that's here. So we've got the H1 and the H3. Let's see how this looks. Do a refresh. Script is returned, but it's not returned the content type. And that's because when we use create template from file, that means that we need to evaluate the contents of that file, which allows us to include scriptlets. And that's what we want to do within the code, which will also allow us to include other HTML files within this file. So let's add that in, in order to render out whatever code we've got contained within the HTML file. Because in this case, when we're rendering out the template, we can also include some Google Apps Script code to run within this templated file. So now when we refresh it, we get the hello world being output. And the nice thing about it now is that we can run some server side code and run that within the HTML file whenever we include the evaluate. So we have a few options where we can execute code without outputting the content on the page. So if we're not outputting anything on the page, but we want to output and apply some conditions, we can do that. And this is breaking back into the Google script side. So the same thing that if we type in and we have a condition that's met true and go over to the close quotes. Now it's going to run whatever code we're outputting here. And then let's break back into the Google script side with the PHP type syntax. And now we're gonna have the rest of the code, so else. And this will say just no. And then once again, break back into the PHP type code and we're gonna close the condition statement. So what do you think is gonna be output here? And we're checking to see if it's true and yes, no. So let's see what happens and we refresh and we get the value of yes. So this is looking at the server side. So if we did connect, create a Boolean value, we can use that Boolean value and now pick it up on the client side and whatever the value from there is, we're gonna use that on the client side within the index HTML and refresh the page and we get a false value because that value is coming from the server side. And then that's the same thing if I was to update the value of boo, I can check it and I can update it to true and it will once again be yes. So that's how we can introduce some code and connecting it to the server side. There's also printing scriptlets. So this outputs the results of their code onto the page. 
So this will allow us to create some content and then output and write the code to the page. And this is the one where we need to use the equal sign. So let's output some content onto the page. And this can just be a regular string value. And I'll just write a string value of hello world. And let's see what that looks like. So go back out to the developer version. And now we're outputting that string value of hello world. And we can also take this and assign it to a string value of hello world. And then go back over to here and we can just output whatever is equal to the string value. So when I refresh it, we're still getting hello world. And now I can update and change it within the Google script. So let's try that one more time and we'll do an update. So we're actually outputting whatever that value is onto the HTML. And this is all done because we're breaking back into the Google script side by using the scriptlet syntax. We also have an option from the to be able to pass the script content back and we can pass it in. So let's create an object. I'm going to call it just HTML and this is going to be our HTML object. It's going to re represent the content template and we now have an option to add data content to this output and using the evaluate. So we evaluate the HTML. So right now this is going to do the same thing. We haven't added any values, additional values that we're passing through, but we do have an option to pass some additional data through to the client side. So directly to the HTML object that we created from the template. So we are creating data and then within the data, we'll create an object called test. And this will also say hello world. So now this value of data test is going to be output to the client side and we don't see anything of it yet, but we can go over to the client side and then we can output that content. I'm going to include it within the script tags so that we can output the content that's coming from the server side and take that value that we're passing. So we're passing in a value of data test and we can pick up that information and then utilize it. And this is all within the client side. So it's within the client side script. So if we want to set a value for the Google script data, we use the same syntax as the scriptlet and then the explanation mark and equal stringify. And this is again, going back into the Google script side and take whatever data that we've passed and turn it into string representation that's going to be picked up on the client side and output and assigned to the value of the JavaScript. And using the console, now we can output data GS because now we've successfully passed it to the client side. And we can also use the document write to write the value of the data that's being passed in and output it directly onto the page so that we can see that content being passed. And this should actually be data GS because that's not picking up from the Google script. So let's refresh it one more time. And now we see the data that's being passed in to the web app from the Google script side. So coming up next, we're going to look at the event object and how we can pick up information from the event object and then use that within the Google script in order to render out different templates. So that's coming up next.